Hello folks, hope you're well. In this video, I'm going to teach you the guitar parts to the incredible Crosshairs by Danger Doom. <laughs> Since the first MF Doom video that we did, go and have a look at that if you haven't watched it, we've had a lot of requests for songs and it has been a bit of a personal voyage of discovery for me. Part of what I like about doing these sort of songs is unpacking the samples used in the track. It's amazing how creatively artists like Danger Mouse and MF Doom use samples in their music and researching the samples that they use has deepened my appreciation of their work and my understanding of the music. I'd love to do more videos like this, so if there's any that you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. But before that, don't forget to like the video if you haven't already, and subscribe for more content like this. Crosshairs by Danger Doom was originally released in 2005 on the Mouse and the Mask album. The sample used is from a relatively obscure 1971 song by Don Harper called Thoughtful Popper. If you haven't already checked out that song, I suggest you go and do that. The link is in the description. And it's pretty incredible what Danger Mouse and MF Doom were able to do with that song. We're gonna focus on the guitar parts in this video, but in my recreation of the sample, we've actually worked up the whole track. So stick around till the end of the video if you wanna see the full performance of that. And let me know in the comments if you want me to do a separate video on the bass line or even the violin parts. I won't be playing the violin parts. So let's get into it. Okay, part one, the intro of the song. The first thing to say is that this whole loop is in the key of A minor. So if you know your way around an A minor pentatonic or an A minor blues, that's gonna help you. If you kind of vaguely know your way around that position, it's gonna be useful. Let's look at the intro. You start on the seventh fret of the D string and the run down goes to the 6th fret of the A, then the 5th fret of the A, then the 8th fret of the E, and the 5th fret of the E is the final note. And you do that four times. I've split the main chord sequence into two parts to make your life a bit easier. The first part is this bit. So you can see we've got the chords and the little run. There's another slight variation on that run, but first of all, let's go through the chords. We've got an A minor at the fifth fret, which is a bar of all the strings at the fifth fret, and then the seventh fret a string and 7th fret D string. Then you've got a beautiful chord, you've got the E7 flat 9. Don't be scared by the flat 9 extension. It's dead simple and it sounds like this. In this case I'm barring the D, the G and the B with the top of my index finger at the 6th fret, then I'm adding my middle finger onto the A string at the 7th fret, and the G string at the 7th fret is played by my 3rd finger, you can see that. So we've got this bar and then two fingers. Now I could, if I wanted to, play the two E strings. In this case, because they're E's and we're playing an E7 flat 9 chord, but you don't need them. So I'm actually muting those two strings. The next chord the final chord for this section is F major 7 and it's a bar at the 8th fret, A string down, muting the low E string and then we're going to add middle finger 9th fret G string, 3rd finger 10th fret D string and little finger 10th fret B string. Now the sequence itself we go obviously played with the correct strumming. I'm gonna show you how I do it. Again, you can 
kind of make your own thing up as long as it sounds good and you're happy with it, that's cool. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the strumming today. You can hear I'm adding some muted notes in there to make the rhythm more interesting. Then we're gonna come on to the little runs. Now the very first time you play that chord sequence, we're gonna stop at the F major seven and move straight back to that guy from the intro. We only do that the very first time we play the sequence. The rest of the time, throughout the song, we do this little run. Which is a pull off from the eighth fret to the sixth fret to the fifth fret on the B string and then the seventh fret on the G string is played twice. So we go. Now, if you're not comfortable with that pull off, you could totally pick that. It'd be fine. It's just gonna be a little more work for your picking hand. So the whole sequence played nice and slowly. The first time it gets played in the song, And from then on, so you can see that change from the E7 flat 9 to the riff is going to require a little bit of practice to get it clean, but it's going to sound great when you've got it right. So let's move on to part three. This is pretty well all chords, and then we've got a couple of little fills which happen within the chord sequence. We're going to start on our A minor and then move through our F major seven, E minor seven at the seventh fret, so that's a bar chord, at the seventh fret, and we're gonna add the middle finger, B string, eighth fret, and add the third finger on the D string in the ninth fret, and we're gonna land back on the A minor. Then we'll do a fill, we'll talk about those in a sec. We go back to the F major seven, and then we do this little move. That's just the same shape we used here. Move down two frets. So that's a D minor seven, then back to the E minor seven, and then to a C major seven. You'll be pleased to see that that is the same shape as the one we did here. The final chord of the sequence is this E9, and that is another bar. You're gonna bar the third finger this time over the G, B, and E string at the seventh fret, and then hopefully add the D string at the six and the A string at the seventh. And again, you could play the low E string here. I think I sometimes do that. When the sequence repeats, all we gotta do is remove a chord or two. I'll play it through, it's dead simple. Another fill there. So let's talk about those fills. The first one is not particularly audible on the track. It's this one. But I like it. So let's put it in. We start on the fifth fret of the G string and we go down to the seventh fret on the D string and then we jump back to the G string at the seventh fret. And we're gonna do a little half bend, so like a one fret bend and then play fifth fret on the G string. Let me just go over that bend. It's bend up and come back down and then we play the fifth fret on the G string. The next fill is pretty similar to the first one. We start on the seventh fret of the G string. We're gonna do virtually the same bend. Perhaps goes a little higher on the record, but who's counting? Up. And then back down to the seventh fret. Play the fifth fret on the G. Then play the seventh fret on the D. And back to the fifth fret on the G. Here it is nice and slowly. The final fill you can hear me doing 
is me comping the chord change, which is C, G. Comping means I'm just playing those chords to fit the available gap at that point. My C is literally three notes. Fifth fret, barring the D, the G, and the B. And then we've got a G, which we're gonna go fifth fret, D string, fourth fret, G string, and third fret, B string, like so. I'm now gonna show you an example of how I use those licks in situ. If you listen to the track, you'll hear hopefully where I'm doing what. So this is just to show you literally where they fit. Let's move on to part four, which is the sort of breakdown section, this bit. Now it's really similar to the intro, we've just got an extra sort of lick on the front of it. And depending on how you run into it with the chords, you might be able to add that note on the front. But if you're going from Those two stabs there, I, if you're playing all the way up to it, you're probably going to start here. So that's fifth fret on the G string and seventh fret on the D string and you're just going to rock between those two notes. You can hear, like the introduction, I'm palm muting this, apart from that one note. And then we go seventh fret on the A string, I'm moving to my middle finger there, you'll see why in a sec. And we go seven, seven on the D, then back to the A string, six, five, to the E string, eight, and five is the last note of that run on the E string. Finally, let's have a look at the solo. So crank your overdrive pedal on tastefully and put your index finger on the fifth fret of the E string. and we go five on the E string, then seven, eight on the E string, and seven on the A, and then seven on the D. If you try and do this with all different fingers, you're gonna get into a real mess. So the way I do it, I'll play it nice and slowly for you, is like that. So I go five, slide seven to eight, then this index finger comes across and does both of those notes. You could probably do that with the middle finger if you wanted to, that's just how I play it. It's really important for this solo to listen to the timing either on the track or on my backing track to really understand where you land these notes. The next bit, five on the G, seven on the G, five, on the B, I'll put that whole bit together. Next little bit. So we're gonna pull off eight to five on the B string, or if you like, little finger. And we're gonna run down seven on the G, five on the G, four, on the G, change strings, five on the D, seven on the D. To finish, I'll play that for you. The next phrase, starting where you landed. Like so, so it's seven on the D, five on the G, Five, five, four on the G, five on the D, and the last note, seven on the A. On my recording, you can hear 
at the end of that first phrase, that's just the B and the E string at the 12th fret. That's not on the record, I just chucked that in, so entirely up to you whether you want to put that in there as well. I think it sounds quite cool. The second half of the solo starts where you landed and we go seven on the D, seven, five, five, five on the G, seven, seven, seven on the G, and you land on the fifth fret of the B. Then you do the same pull-off lick that we did in the first half. Exactly the same. All that happens now is you're going to finish with a slightly different lick. So it goes... From the 7th fret to the 5th fret of the G. 7th on the G. Back to 5. 4. I like this slide into seven on the D, eight on the A, and two notes, I think two notes, might be one. It's two on the seventh fret of the A string, and again, right at the end, I chuck another one of those in. Well, there you go. What an absolutely brilliant piece of work. I hope you had as much fun digging into this track as I did. As ever, if you want a copy of the backing track to practice to, or a tab to help you with the arrangement, please let me know. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you on the next one.